Anthony writes, Mark, there is no mention in the media about refueling the ISS. To keep the ISS oriented so the solar panels pointed to the sun requires rocket fuel. In normal use, with the movements inside and outside forces, the ISS is going to start to tumble. It cannot be avoided. There must be small rocket motors constantly firing to keep the ISS oriented correctly. They must be controlled by the three-axis gyroscopes. There must be two on the space shuttle, like a naval ship. How long does a gyroscope last in service without maintenance? How much fuel would be needed to balance the ISS for a month, for a year? How much fuel could a cargo capsule carry to fuel the ISS? It would take a spacewalk to connect hoses for the fuel transfer, or one must consider valves and seals. I have read and watched some information about rockets in space. I am coming to the conclusion that they cannot work in a vacuum. A rocket cannot push against nothing. The theory of a rocket pushing against itself is like picking yourself up by your own bootstraps. Oh, interesting, I hadn't heard that one. You must include the fuel as a component of the mass of the rocket. You, to move something in a vacuum, there must be some reaction separated from the rocket. There must be an explosion a short distance away to create a reaction for the rocket. The original Orion concept was to have small nuclear explosions under a capsule. Spraying and burning propellant just does not work. When you see a rocket launch, you see the thrust bill out to the side. As it gets higher, there is less atmosphere to push against. Soon the rocket pushes against, wait for it, nothing. For that, for an action, there must be a reaction in space. There is no possibility of a reaction in space. No one can hear you scream. I added that. He didn't. Uh, evidence must always trump belief. The evidence is pointing to a flat Earth. It looks we like we are lab rats in some kind of experiment for some higher entity. Anthony from northern Idaho.